Hello and welcome to This New Life. I am super duper excited about this word today because listening to it, my faith just got stirred up for more. So I believe it'll do the same to you. So sit back and enjoy the word today. What a beautiful day, amen? We are here in the presence of God and anything could happen. Anything good will happen, amen? Among you are expecting. I like what Gabe said. Are you ready? Did you bring something big, amen, to receive from the Lord? Amen. Among you were here last week. We were teaching along the lines of new wine and then enlarging your capacity, expanding your boundaries, amen, because God wants more for you and me. Amen. Miracles are ready. Answers are ready. Amen. But our capacity needs to enlarge. Amen. And if you look around you, this place is being transformed. Amen. If you look around, you know, walls are being changed. Amen. You know, the sound system is different. Later on, you're going to see an LED here. You know, changes, changes, changes. Amen. You know why? Because we're, pre we're preparing for new wine. We're preparing for increase. We're preparing for more that God has in store for us, for this church, and for each and every one of us. Amen. You know, for new wine to be, to be handled, we need to have fresh wine skin. Or you could say new wine skin. In Luke 5.37, it says, But no one puts new wine into old wine skin. If he does, the new wine will burst the skins, and it will be spilled, and skins will be destroyed. God's new wine is precious. Amen. He loves you know, to bring new things to each and every one of us. But verse 38 says, but new wine must be put into fresh wine skin. Amen. God's desire is that we, you know, expect Him big. Amen. That we have that mindset, that capacity to receive the new wine. Because as far as God is concerned, new wine is ready. Amen. As far as, far as God is concerned, new things have been set by God. But it's up to us now to agree with Him by enlarging our capacity to receive more. Amen. Isaiah 54, 2 says, Enlarge the place of your tent and let the curtains of your habitations be stretched out. Do not hold back. Turn to your neighbor and say, Do not hold back. <laughs> Amen. Strengthen your cords and lengthen your stakes. Among you know, this is not a suggestion. Right? This is a spiritual command because many of us know if we trust and obey God, it's for our good. God knows what's good for us. God knows what's not good for us and God's, you know, prepared good things for us and we need to agree with Him. We need to trust Him and we need to obey. Amen. Enlarge means to grow large, to go beyond, to make more room. Amen. To increase capacity, to break out, to break through, to expand, to go further, to occupy new territories. Come on. Not just in the physical, but definitely in the spirit. Amen. Definitely with our mind, will, and emotions. No limits, no boundaries. Thinking big, go large, go unlimited rice. Come on, right? Go unlimited. If there's unlimited, go unlimited. Amen. With God, God wants us to go unlimited. Amen. Aren't you glad that we are under open heaven? And when we are under open heaven, doors are always opening. Amen. What the devil meant for harm or what situations are closed for you, God is always going to bring new doors. He opens the windows. He opens the doors for us. Amen. Because you are under open heaven, all because of what Jesus has done for you and for me. Amen. In Genesis 12, verse 1 to 3, this is the promise that was made to Abram. God said, now the Lord has said to Abram, get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house to a land I will show you. If you were Abraham, you really need to trust God because he has not seen the land you know, God said, I will show you the land. All you need to do is get out first, right? You need to trust me first, you know, before I show you. The world tells you, you need to show me first before I trust you, right? But God is saying, no, you need to trust me first before I'll show you. 
Get out of your comfort zone. Get out of your small thinking. Amen. Get out of your limitations. Get out of your hurts and your offense in the past. And move forward to the future that God has in store for you. Amen. It's good to look at the past, to learn from the past, but be faithful towards the future. I like what FNL declares. You know, we are a tribe called forward. Amen. We move forward into what God has in store for us because God is not done with us yet. Amen. We have glory days in the past or gory days. I don't know. But both, you know, we can be thankful or we can be, you know, saying, Lord, thank you. It's done. But I'm excited for what I have in store, for you have in store for me in the future. Amen. So get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house to a land. I will show you. I will show you. Amen. The land is prepared. Turn, your neighbor, turn to your neighbor and say, the land is already prepared. Amen. Amen. And look at verse 2. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. Isn't that the reason why we want to be blessed? Amen. That's the cycle of the blessing. The capacity to give and the capacity to receive gets, in, gets us into the cycle of blessing. When we have a capacity enlarged to receive, we have the capacity enlarged to give. Amen. So God is saying, verse 3, I will bless those who bless you. I will curse him who curses you. And in you, in you, in us, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, it's good that we are local, but God is into global. God wants his church, his body to impact the, the world. And as we take part in what God is doing in these last days together with the body of Christ, we are impacting globally. Amen. Because the Bible says, this is the, this is the promise to you and to me. In you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Come on, think about that. God is a big thinker. Amen. For us, we're kind of limited. Oh, just me, you know, my uh, sphere of influence. But God, well, you know, God can do amazing things, you know, with your obedience. Amen. So he's saying all. Last time I checked, the definition of all is all. Amen. All the families of the earth is blessed. Amen. Let me say this to all of us. God has destined greatness for each and every one of us in Christ. Amen. So God wants us to enlarge. God wants us to expand. Amen. And last week, we talked about, you know, things that will help us to enlarge our capacity to extend our borders or to extend our boundaries. Number one, we need to increase our capacity. If we want to increase our capacity, we must learn to take God at His word. We must believe God. We, ne we need to dare to believe the word. Amen? Because the word is supernatural. The one thing that connects us to heaven and the one thing that connects us into the supernatural of God is His word. The Word is going to open things for us. The Word is going to position us to see heaven on earth. But we need to dare, amen, to believe the Word. No matter what, I need to believe the Word. Luke 5, verse 1 to 7. In verse 1, it says, So it was the, as the multitude pressed about Him to hear the Word of God. So Jesus was doing a circuit. He was talking about the Word. He was talking about the good news. He stood by the lake of Genazareth or Galilee. Verse 2, and saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. And so verse 3, then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the disciples, or rather the multitudes, from the boat. Can you picture it? All right, Jesus was you know, in the boat, and he was speaking good news, preaching good news to the multitude, all right? Now, let me ask you a question. Have you ever wondered why Jesus thought first? You know the miracle is going to happen here, right? But the order and the pattern is Jesus needed to teach first before the miracle. Why? Because Jesus was setting the atmosphere for the people to receive. 
It's so important that we come to a place that our hearts are set to receive what God has in store for us. Amen. You know why? So that we can keep the miracle. So we can hold the miracle. So that the miracle will manifest to us. It rather manifest in us and through us. Amen. Because God is teaching us, you know, how to facilitate the answers. Amen. By knowing the word. Because God can do an amazing thing right now, and people are into that. They go from one place just to get healed. But there will be a time wherein the body of Christ matures and understands healing can manifest in and through us. Amen. Rather than a man of God, we honor man of God and women of God. But God is saying to all of us, hey, you need to know that the same anointing that is in that man, the same Jesus that it is in ma that man is the same Jesus that you have. So teaching is so important, and I'm glad you are here. I'm glad that you come to, to, to the church. I'm glad people are watching, you know, via live streaming, all right, and all of these things, because when the word is taught, when the good news is preached, good news about Jesus, atmosphere changes. And when the atmosphere is set, destiny, uh, atmosphere rather opens you up to your destiny. The atmosphere of heaven opens you up to your destiny. Amen. So the teaching of the good news expanded Peter's capacity to believe. All right? And so I believe that Peter and some of the, the soon-to-become disciples, they were listening, you know, to Jesus. And when Jesus said something, gave them an instruction, Peter was able to follow through because of what he heard. Amen. Are you following? Verse 4, when he had stopped speaking, Jesus was, has stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all, toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, at your word, something happened to Peter. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats. So they began to sink. Someone said that this is the net breaking, boat sinking, asking partners to help miracle. Right? Right? And all because Peter understood something. All right? All because the capacity of Peter to believe was enlarged through the good news that was preached by Jesus. Are you ready for your miracle? Amen. God is enlarging your capacity. New wine is coming. Enlarging our capacity to receive. Now, there is a big difference between net and nets. Jesus said, cast out the nets. Peter, you know, cast out the net, right? Big difference. Among you know, the same word was spoken, but it's in the capacity of the person to believe the word. Because if Peter obeyed, he cast out the nets, then the impact will be nets breaking, right? Boats sinking. The whole town, come and help me, though. Because I need help, right? The whole town will be blessed because of this miracle, amen. So it's not just you or your, your party or your people, but the whole town and even the towns near that place, amen. Because the blessing is not just for you, amen. The blessing is for other people too, amen. Are you with me? Amen. So the point of all of this is for us to understand the capacity to receive and the capacity to give comes from understanding or having a revelation, not just of the blessing, but of the blesser. Amen. Because the blesser, when the blesser is there, the blessing will always be available. The miracle will always be available. Amen. That brings me to the next point. If you want to enlarge your capacity, you must embrace a grace-fueled revelation of Jesus. A grace-fueled revelation of Jesus. Because everything that we have is because of His grace. 
Amen. Peter received something miraculous, something supernatural because it was the grace of God, all right, towards them, all right? And for all of us, it is because of the grace of God. We need to see Jesus as the blesser. We need to see God as the giver, amen. We need to see God, not the taker, not the giver of sickness and disease, amen. We need to see God as a good God. God of grace that imparts grace to you, imparts favor to you because by virtue of us being in Christ. Not because of your works, not because of your diligence. You know, all of that has good place. It has a place in a Christian life. Amen. But grace gives to us and we take what grace has given by faith. Are you with me? 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, We can all draw close. This is in the Passion. We can all draw, draw close to Him with the veil removed from our faces. Amen. That's grace. Amen. The veil has been removed. And we can come to the throne room of grace whenever we have a need. Amen. And with no veil, we all, we all become like mirrors who brightly reflect the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are being transfigured into His very image to His very image as we move from one brighter level of glory to, the, to another. And this glorious transfiguration comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. What happens is when we have and behold an understanding of who Jesus is, amen, that God is good, that God has loved us, who He is, what He's done, and who we are in Him, that transforms us transforms our mind, transforms us to receive from a good God. Amen. All the blessings, we are not really worthy of it. Amen. But God has blessed us by virtue of us being in Christ. All the promises of God, they are yes. And amen, it's done. Why? Because we are in Christ Jesus. Amen. And so when we have a revelation of who Jesus is, we enlarge our capacity to receive and to give. Are you with me? The third thing that can help us enlarge our capacity to extend our borders is we need to challenge and stretch ourselves by thinking big. Amen. Challenge and stretch ourselves by thinking big. Rather than thinking net, God wants us to think nets. Amen. Because as far as God is concerned with you and me, God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, much more that you could ask, dream, or imagine. Amen. You think, you know, you pray a prayer, God can, you know, enlarge that. God can uh, wow you with it. Amen. God can supersede that. Amen. So God is a big thinker. Amen. God desires for us to resist thinking small and begin to think big because we have a big God. Amen. Rather than thinking small, amen, why not begin to think like God thinks? Amen. Do you know that living small or thinking small robs you of the blessing of God? Oh, I'm no good. I'm a second rate, you know, cop copycat, you know. I am. <laughs> no, you are the son of God. It still works, huh? You know, that phrase still works. You still know your movies, Tagalog movies. But anyways, you know, I'm a son of God by virtue of what God has done for me. I am blessed by God. You know, I am who I am by the grace of God. Amen. You begin to think big. You begin to think like God thinks. In every situation, you know, think like God thinks. Do you know the renewed mind tells us, you know, the renewed mind always thinks the possible. Amen. The renewed mind always thinks the possible. In the midst of impossibility, the renewed mind will always, you know, uh, you know, always think it's going to be possible. It's going to be possible. Are you with me? Amen. What keeps you from living small or thinking small? When you begin to think about yourself and you begin to look at yourself, you're going to be limited. When you begin to think and look at other people or other things, you know, what people are saying to you, you're going to be limited. You are going to be put in a box wherein you're going to be thinking small. God does not want us to be thinking small. With His Word, it enlarges our capacity to believe for the supernatural. Amen. We need to elevate our spirit into the level of God's Word. Amen. 
there was a time where in 14 years ago, Mylene and I, we believed for a new car. It's time. Because whenever the, it rains outside, the car also rains inside. Okay? And also, if you need the, the air con, I have like what you call a, 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 a stick. And I need to hit something, you know, for the air con and the compressor to move or to, to tur be turned on. So I tell you, we were believing, for, and, but that car served us well. So there was a time wherein we decided, me and Mylene, we're going to believe for a new car. Among you know, believing is free. <laughs> so we, because of the word that we have been receiving, we, I remember we were in Bible school during that time. And across the Bible school, you know, there's the dealer, the Mitsubishi dealer. dealer. And so after class, me and Mylene, we go to the dealer. Well, you know, that's free, right? You go and check as if you have the money, <laughs> right? You check, oh, look, I like the power. I like the color and all of that, you know? And so the word caused us to enlarge our capacity to dream big because in the natural, we had no money, all right? We had no money. We were starting the church, you know? The church was small, you know? We were, we were really believing God, all right? And so for us to step out, you know, to believe for a new car, it was all faith. It was all faith. But, you know, we just believed, and we, I carried all, during that time an attache case. All right? Attache case. And inside the attache case, I asked for a brochure. Okay? In the attache case, <laughs> I put the brochure. So every time I open the attache case, because the pastors during that time, they carry that. Right, Pastor? <laughs> Not you? Oh, come on. <laughs> All the pastors, to be holy, they carry a tashi case. Okay? And, Shemper, you know, with the, remember those days. Aren't you glad it's a new wine? All right? We don't carry a tashi case. All right? Anyways, when I opened the attache case, how do you pronounce that? Attache. Okay. Anyways, that case, I see the brochure. The brochure, so it really speaks to us. And I always pray and believe for that, for that car. But then again, God enlarges you. So I go to the dealer. I saw this car called Adventure. Now, if you have an adventure, praise God. Okay? But that car, I said, wow, okay, it's good. You know, the, uh, the amount, it's quite uh, a lot, but I don't have the money to buy that. So still, I can believe for that. You know, but Mylene, praise God for the wife. All right? The wife now enlarges you even to think more, to think big. All right? So she said, you know, Giselle, why are we looking at the adventure? There's another van here. It's limited edition. It's called the Space Gear. The Space Gear. Why not take your adventure into space? Okay? So now, <laughs> Mylene said, do we have the money to believe for the adventure? I said, no. All right? Why not believe for big? Why not exceed? You know, it's all the same with God. You ask for the adventure. You ask for the, you know, for the, for the space gear. It's all as long as God is leading you to do it. Amen. You have a word from God. Amen. And so, okay, we believe. And you know, lo and behold, God gave us that space gear. All expenses paid. We did not pay for it. Yeah, how did that happen? I'm just going to share you to you maybe some other time. But God exceeded our expectation. We were thinking of an adventure, but God says, hey, your adventure is in me. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to take you into space. <laughs> All right? I'm going to cause your gear to, to go higher. Amen. Amen. So I tell you, what are you believing God for? God is saying, dream big. Dream like me. Put the word inside of you and enlarge your capacity to believe. Amen. Don't live narrow or small. Allow God to speak to you. Allow the word to enlarge your believing, enlarge your thinking. Amen. Live large in your heart. Live large in your spirit. Amen. Live large in your words. Amen. Speak words, you know, that will bring life and enlarge people around you. Amen. Live large by encouraging people. Live large by blessing some people. Amen. Live large in your giving. 
Amen. Because if we think like God, God is large in His giving. Amen. Aren't you glad that He thinks big of us? Amen. And so live large. I pray that the people around us, at the moment they come in contact with us, they're going to leave large. Amen. That they're going to be transformed because of the Jesus that you carry inside of you. Can someone say amen? Amen. amen. So we continue to, to read in Luke 5, verse 8. So when Simon Peter saw it, he saw the miracle. He fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. Let me say this, God wants to astonish us. Amen. I'm a father. I want to make, do, you know, prepare things for my son and for my family. Amen. And I want to, in the capacity that I have, I want to bless them. How much more your heavenly father? He's wanting to astonish you. He's wanting to surprise you. He's wanting to impress you. He's wanting to just love on you. Amen. He's wanting to wow you. Amen. That's the father that you and I have. Every good and perfect gift comes from above, the Bible says. You know, it has been estimated that that catch, you know, through the net, huh? that catch was nearly one ton of fish, all right? And what was normally caught in two weeks. And also the miracle of miracles is, you know, when you consider the time of fishing, normally they fish at night. This happened on a daytime, in the morning. You could see the fingerprints of God. I pray that we are going to see the fingerprints of God in our lives. Amen. So the next thing that you need to see when you want to enlarge is this. Get out of your comfort zone. Right? By living predictable and unpredictable because there is more. There is more. Get out of your comfort zone. Just like Abraham. Abraham, get out of your comfort zone. God is saying to us, get out of your place of comfort. You know, your mind, your, your, your routine. Because there is more. Start thinking large. Start thinking big. Amen. God is wanting to increase each and every one of us by living predictable and by living unpredictable. Predictable means what is expected. Able to be predicted, anticipated, foreseen. What is foundation to us? You know, when we live predictable, we know what we believe. Amen. We stand on the Word. Amen. The reason why we're predictable is because the Word is sure for us. Amen. Christ is our, the, the rock on which we stand. Amen. Winds may come. You know, storms may come. We are standing on the rock. Amen. We know what we believe. We know that God loves us. Amen. Your character is being transformed because you now look to Him and His Word. Amen. So you are predictable with regards to your character. People will tell you, I can, you know, I can rely on that man. I can rely on that woman. They honor their word. Amen. You are loyal. Amen. You are predictable with your loyalty. You are predictable with your accountability. Amen. You're predictable with your, you know, credibility and your reliability. With time management, you say, I'll be there, I'll be there. Right? I, I will help you, I will help you. Amen. You, you operate just like God, you know, operates. Amen. Because Christ lives inside of you. You're predictable with regards to your commitment, your vision. People can rely on you. And most importantly, God can entrust you with more. Amen. God can entrust you with more. So God wants us to live predictable, but also God wants us to live unpredictable. Amen. What does that mean? That we open our hearts to new things, new ways, new levels. We're not stuck in the old. We are getting ready for the new. We're always wanting where God wants to be. Because the safest place to be is in the pursuit of God. Where Christ is, I will be there. If Jesus is there, I will be there. I want to be where God is because that's the blessing zone. This is where God wants to manifest His glory, where He is. Amen. So if God tells me to move, then I will move. If God tells me to stretch, I will stretch out. Amen. When was the last time you challenged your routine in the natural? When was the last time you, you know, you did not let the world to define your normal? You were not called to be normal. 
You are called to be supernatural. Not abnormal, ah. Okay? You are called to be supernatural. We were called to live in this world as if heaven is here on earth. Amen. And so we were not, we're not bound by the rules and things, you know, not the rules, but the dictates of the world. God wants us to think like He thinks. All things are possible. Amen. So when was the last time you challenged your routine? When was the last time you colored outside the lines? You begin to think outside the lines. Amen. When was the time you think, you know, begin to think outside the box? This is not the norm, but I'm going to do it. You know, I go to the dealer. You know, this is not the norm. I ask, you know, I pray, I lay hands, you know, and all of these. This is not the norm. I believe I go to the, my attache case. It's still, the brochure is there. This is not the norm. You buy, you know, uh, you know a car you know, with faith. That's not the norm. Amen. But I saw it. Amen. So when was the last time you live in spontaneity led by the Spirit of God? Wherein God is, can trust you. Okay, Giselle, jump. jump. Giselle, move. Okay, move. Giselle, do this. When was the last time God led you in spontaneity? Because God is a fresh spirit. He's fresh. All right, and he wants to bring us from one level to the next. So if we're stuck in that and we don't trust the blesser, then sometimes, you know, we just are limiting ourselves and we're limiting God to move in our lives. Amen. So it's challenging our thinking. It's challenging our, our, our concepts. Why? Because if you're ready for new wine, if you want new wine to come, then we need fresh wineskins. Amen. And so I was meditating on this word, living in spontaneity. You know, being spontaneous as led. That's the key. As led by the Spirit of God. Because God will always lead you into the right, right place at the right time, doing the right thing with the right people, with the right heart. Amen. When was the last time God led you to give something to some people? When was the last time, you know, you step out of your, your normal routine and be part of of a ministry wherein you bless people rather than you be blessed. Amen. When was the last time that you, you know, attended the service standing because you are a server? You are an usher. When was the last time? You know, praise God, right? God wants to enlarge us. And so as I was meditating on this, you know, God gave me a scenario. God gave me a scenario. You know, the sister Mylene came home from the States and she was here for like five days, five days. And uh, from the stage, she went here. The first time we saw her in that five days was, was when we brought her, got her from the airport, brought her to Batangas. Because the parents of Mylene lives in Batangas. And so we need to bring her there because the father needs, you know, some protocols. And the father is getting healed. Amen. It's healed, all right? Getting better, rather. And so the last time that Mylene saw the sister, you know, was... Uh, on that trip, five days, was in the last day wherein we got her from Batangas to bring her to the airport. To make the long story short, no time for them to fellowship. But Mylene had an idea, all right? And I believe that is spontaneous from the Spirit too. Why not invest and go to Hong Kong? You know, why? Because to go to Hong Kong, because the sister is going to have a 10-hour layover all right, in Hong Kong. And so Mylene, you know, prayed about it, consulted me, and I said, yes. You know, why not, yes, together, uh, why not you, you go to Hong Kong and surprise your sister that you are going to be with her in the plane. Mom, you know, that's a good idea, all right? So she went, you know, I brought her to the airport, their flight is uh, at 6, and so we were there at 3 a.m. in the morning, and so Mylene surprised her sister, and the sister said, oh, it was so wonderful. It was just wonderful. And so they flew. Little did Mylene know that because of this word that I was meditating, the Holy Spirit said, follow her. <laughs> Holy Spirit said, surprise her. Get out of your norm, Giselle. Because if you know me, I would not do this. As a, as a man, I always think of the finances. Praise God for the word, no? Praise for the word will enlarge you. 
As I was meditating on this, living predictable and unpredictable, Jesus, God said, I believe it's the Holy Spirit. You know what? Memories are priceless. Just like MasterCard. It's priceless. Okay? You pay, you pay. It's priceless, right? But again, you know, priceless. Money, you can earn it again. Money, you can receive it. All right? You know, I can provide for you money. Do you trust me enough for this? So the Holy Spirit said, why not follow her? Surprise her. So I talked to Brother Rico, Mon, Pastor Joey, you know, because I'm be going to be leaving some uh, things here. So I asked them to cover for me. But I said, shh, shh, okay? I want this to be a surprise. I talked to Pastor Paul over FaceTime, and she almo he almost gave away my surprise. Almost. She asked, uh, he asked Mylene, so how, how about that su surprise of uh, Giselle? I said, Pastor, oh, you were meaning the surprise of Mylene to, his, uh, to her sister. And then after our talk, Mylene left and she, Pastor Paul said, that was so close. <laughs> I said, Pastor. Well, anyway, this is what happened. So that, you know, I surprised. She left at 6 o'clock in the morning. I left at around 10, and I waited in the airport, of course, with David, our Connect Church. David and Ellen, they were there. Ellen was with Mylene going around in Hong Kong with her sister, and the time that they needed to go back to the airport for the sister to have the connecting flight to the States, Mylene brought her to the departure, and Ellen brought Mylene down, and I was there waiting. <laughs> Just like Korean drama. Ah, just like someone commented, it's like uh, someone meeting Coco Martin. I said, who's Coco Martin? Okay. Anyways, do you want to see it? Okay, let's see this. <laughs> so I was wearing shades, you know, and jacket. <laughs> Look at how many times she will embrace me, huh? Look. Wow. Again, again, again. Wow. <laughs> hey. Among you, no, I garnered a billion points there. Pogi points, right? Amen. More. I believe when I saw the, the face of Mylene, because of that surprise, I said, it's worth it. It's worth it. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I could not have done that if not for the word. Really, if not for the word. I'm not self-promoting. I'm not saying, oh, look at me, follow me. No, it's not me. I believe it's the word. The Holy Spirit said, why not love on your wife? Amen. Why not love on your husband? Amen. Why not do this? Get out of the norm and do something that will bless other people. Amen. Get out of the norm. Why not begin to bless other people by, you know, blessing them with some things? Do something, you know, special to some people. Amen. Among you know, that is actually stepping out of the comfort zone and doing things. Amen. It's going to bless you. It blessed me so much. Amen. So when was the last time you surprised your wife? Oh, I can say that because I did it. <laughs> when was the last time that you surprised your husband? When was the last time you surprised your kids? Ito mamon ho para sa inyo. Something like that. I don't know. You know, amen? Right? Amen? Why? Because we are being prepared. As God leads us, God is enlarging us. God is stretching us. Because God wants to entrust us with more. Amen? Because in our simple obedience, God is positioning us in our simple obedience. Positioning, you'd say that it's small. You'd say it's really nothing, you know, but you obey God. The process is so important because destiny does not happen in the big things. Amen? Destiny happens in the small things. 
Amen. You begin to believe God. You begin to step out, begin to do this. Amen. And you allow the Holy Spirit. The key there is allowing the Holy Spirit, amen, to lead you and to guide you. Amen. And so think out of the box. Amen. Live out of, you know, out of the box. Keep you know, moving forward and be open when He calls to shake the dust and pushes you forward into unpredictability. Amen. Make room for the new things. Amen. Make room for the new things and let go of the old. Let go of rejection, betrayal, fear, abandonment, and offense. Let go of that and begin to move towards peace. Begin to move towards healing. This is the time. It's not time to be depressed. Amen. It's time to get excited for what God has in store for you. Amen. So the next thing that can help you, and the last thing is this. Continue to ask God to increase your capacity. When was the last time you asked God, God, increase my capacity? You know, there was a man in the Old Testament, he was named sorrow or pain because the mother bore him in pain. But you know what? He asked God, God of Israel, bless me. His name was Jabez, right? First Chronicles 4 verse 10, Jabez called upon God of Israel saying, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my border and that your hand might be upon me. Look at that prayer. Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge me. Yeah. All right? And your hand might be upon me, that you would keep me from harm so that it might not bring the pain, bring me pain. And look at what God did. God granted what he asked because Jabez prayed a prayer that is in line with God's heart. His heart is to bless you bless us, to enlarge us so that we can be a blessing to other people. Amen. When was the last time you said, enlarge me, God. Use me. I'm alive. I have a purpose. Enlarge my capacity to receive. Enlarge my capacity to give God. This, you, are, you are in my heart, and I, my life is yours. Enlarge me. When was the last time you, you prayed that prayer? Amen. And I believe God is going to honor that. Among you want that. Amen. If you really want that, if you really want that new wine, you know, I'm going to pray that prayer with you. Why not raise your hands? If you truly, truly want that, if you are serious for the new things, if you're serious about you wanting to enlarge for more, God, I don't want to be stuck in my, in my now. I want to move forward to my future. Come on, God, help me. Right? Good. Raise your hands right now and follow this prayer after me. God, enlarge my capacity. Extend my borders. Oh, that you would bless me. That you would prosper me. So that I could be a blessing to the people around me. That in me, all my, the families of the earth will be blessed. Use the little that I have. Use me and multiply me for your glory. In Jesus' name. And everybody will say, Amen and amen. Come on, let's give praise to Jesus today. Hallelujah. Did you get anything out of that? Amen. Get ready for a week because God is going to grant you, amen, that request. Come on. Get ready to enlarge your capacity. Amen. Speaking of enlarging capacity, this church has been a blessing to us and to the network churches, but also to our communities. Amen. A couple of uh, days ago, you know, we have a team from NLCOM, you know, who went to Itogo and Benguet and be, they made, a, you know, an impact in that area. And so we're going to show you two uh, videos here about NLCOM and just for you to be aware of the compassion arm of this church. We are doing things, not just preaching the word, but we are blessing communities, right? So let's watch the video. New Life Community Care, together with New Life Baguio and New Life La Trinidad, responded to the needs of evacuees affected by Typhoon Ompong. The team provided 28,000 hot meals of breakfast and dinner at various evacuation sites in a span of five days. And, in partnership with Regional Disaster Risk and Reduction Management Council of Cordillera, they were able to serve a total of 4,800 meals to hundreds of rescuers working to retrieve dead bodies from the landslide at Barangay Ukab, Itogon Benguet. 
Hi guys, we are here right now in ground zero of the uh, landslide that happened here in, uh, in Togon. We're serving meals, breakfast and dinners to the victims. At the same time, we are also serving uh, food and uh, meals for the responders in this area. And they are very thankful because they are digging, they are tired and they, they are hungry. And so the food is a major part of the help that we are giving to them. This is just the beginning of our efforts to reach out to many more affected. To help, you can go online via www.newlife.ph or this New Life app. Clicking on the Give button will take you to the page where you can specify the amount you want to give. Please indicate that your donation is for New Life Community Care. Together, let us respond, reach out, and rebuild lives affected by Typhoon Ompong. Thank you. In the age of climate change where flooding is prevalent, emergency gears are a necessity. Hi, I'm Pastor Edwin and this is the Life Bag. You can use it as your everyday bag, a travel bag, or as your kid's school bag. You can also use it as a go bag so you're prepared for calamities and emergencies. It is made from the same material used in a life vest, so it will keep you afloat on water. And it is also good for a cover on your head during an earthquake. In the news, I often see a lot of children drowning because of flood. So I ask God, how can I help them? And that's how Life Bag is conceived. It is in my heart that we and our vulnerable children are always prepared and safe from disasters. NLCOM, in partnership with Aqualife, is launching the Life Bag Project. In every purchase of an adult-sized life bag, we are going to donate one kid-sized life bag to schools and communities prone to flooding. Or you can simply sponsor a kid's bag for donation. Beth actually got a dream, and they're a maker and supplier of life vests to local governments. And they received a vision from the Lord to create a bag made out of life vests so that you can use this whenever there's a flooding. And, you know, you can also use it every day as a bag. So look at that. So there's a whistle inside and uh, some material there. So anyway, so that's, if you buy... This one, you will be donating one bag for kids. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, places or uh, schools who are prone. They are prone for flooding. And then we will do a training for disaster preparedness for the kids in the school. And then we will give this for free. Okay? We will give this for free for the, for the uh, schools. Come on. Communities. Uh, that are prone for floodings. That means it will be a continuing project of uh, New Life Community Care Foundation. So I would encourage you to buy one for you, and this will be your protection. This is a good protection for, for flooding. And then as you buy, we are basically gathering stocks for bags that we will be distributed for the kids. Good? Thank you very much, Sai. Let me just uh, uh, also thank you for your offering last Sunday as we were doing the uh, operation. You know what, New Life, you're making a noise. Not just a noise, but you're becoming a voice to this nation. I'm just talking to the Undersecretary of uh, BSWD in Itogon. Uh, well, apparently she's there for uh, inspection. And then she found out that New Life Community Care is doing feeding program with the victims, and at the same time, the responders. So when the mayor knew about it, because we, we introduced ourselves, and the mayor said, okay, uh, pastor, can you feed also our staff, you know? So we fed their staff, the DSWD volunteer workers in munici uh, municipality, uh, in municipio, no? And then, sabi niya, we cannot afford also to feed our responders on the ground. 
Can you help us? Can you help us? So how many of them, uh, Mayor? Mga 900 lang po. Oh, kayang kaya yan. We're feeding six. The, our kitchen truck, my brothers and sisters, can feed 6,000 meals a day. Come on. And as far as I know, I'm, I might be wrong, but as far as I know, I haven't seen a kitchen truck operating like that in the Philippines. Hindi ko lang alam kung mayroon. I might be wrong. But the government officials are so amazed with what we are doing. In fact, even the city of Montinlupa is asking the spec of the, of the kitchen truck because they want to build one. Church, you're a voice. Bring all your tithes and your offerings in the storehouse so that there may be food in my house. The reason we were able to feed almost 30,000 uh, 30, meals in Itogon, immediately, we don't have to wait for sponsors or we don't have to wait for somebody to help us before we go. Immediately. You know why? You're faithful in your giving. You're faithful in your giving. We have food in the house. We have food. We have fund in the house. So that Pastor Paul, when Pastor Giselle and the leadership, we start to decide, we go to Itogon, bring the kitchen truck. Of course, you will buy ingredients. You will buy sacks of rice. And it's not cheap. But the house is always ready because you are always committed to give. And you are blessing this nation. Can you say amen to that? Let me just pray for you right now as you give. Father God, I thank you for your people. I thank you for new life. I thank you for all the things that you are doing through new life. I thank you for the message of enlargement that we receive. But more so, our enlargement as a people has a purpose to become a blessing. And this house has been a blessing, Lord. And I speak breakthrough over their finances that they will continue to become a blessing to this nation. And we give you praise, Father God, in Jesus' name. And everybody will say, Amen. So, are you ready to live predictable and unpredictable? Are you ready to get out of your comfort zone and do something you've never done before? Believe me, when it's led by the Spirit of God, it's all worth it. So here's to a week full of joyful surprises for you. God bless you.